and gents. Moxie Talk with Kurt Jacobs on the grounds at Keeneland Racecourse, the internationally renowned racetrack in Lexington, Kentucky. If you want chefs, we got them. If you want master distillers, we got them. Some of the best musical artists in the country are here this weekend. Stay tuned. Hey, ladies and gents, we are here at the Railbird Festival at the Keeneland Racetrack, the internationally renowned racetrack in Lexington, Kentucky. And I am here with the infamous, the one and only <laughs> Sam Four. Hello, of Tuk -tuk. hello. And I'm going to let her talk about being owner and operator of that. You know, if I had my name on the microphone like this, <laughs> I might be driven to Excel, too. Jeez. I love that. I love that. This is fancy. Yeah, well, you know, we try. You know, it's amazing what you can get on Amazon. I right? digress. Yes. I'm very impressed. <laughs> so, so what is it about owning your own restaurant that makes you so passionate about doing it? You know, it's when you put your heart into something that mm -hmm. you truly believe in. Mm -hmm. It makes a massive difference. It's mm -hmm. believing in what you do. Sure. Is... Sorry, editors. That's okay. It's a festival. What believing are you do? in what you do is very important. Mm -hmm. And I set out with a mission. I, I wanted to share flavors. I wanted to share stories. And I wanted to find a way to hold the door open for more people. And I figured out that if I wedge my way in there, I can hold it open for quite some time. Sure. <laughs> I love it. So how did you come up with the name of Tuk Tuk? So initially we were setting up behind bars and restaurants in a little canopy tent. We bought a $80 tent from Walmart and that is how our restaurant started. Um, and we chose Tuk Tuk because that is my preferred method of transportation when I'm in Sri Lanka. They're like okay. little like death traps. They're like <laughs> miniature Volkswagen Beetles, Okay. but like tricycles at the same sure. time. And so it's, it's, you know, it's harrowing, but it is also very portable, very nimble and very quick to get from one point to another. And then when you look at how things have gone, it seems like it's almost an appropriate name. <laughs> <laughs> well, there, there's that. So my, my next question is, what advice would you give to someone inspiring to get into this line of work, regardless of age, second career, first career? Be ready to work. Yeah. It is so much work. It, I mean, it is truly a labor of love for me mm -hmm. because I love what I do. I love getting to meet people. I love getting to teach people. It, it's wonderful. You know, you get to do something on a stage like this sure. in front of so many people. Like nobody gets those kind of opportunities. But, you know, it's all about making sure that your feet are on the pavement, making sure that you're going for everything that you need to do. I, at first I was like taking every opportunity and then I realized, I think the most important thing is to know your value. Mm -hmm. And once I realized my value, people took me more seriously. I love that. What's the best piece of advice ever given to you, Sam? Work hard and be nice to people. You know, that's such a simple thing and it's so hard to do. <laughs> you know, if it's gotten me this far, I'm not going to complain. <laughs> well, it's, it's often not you. It's the other person that really tests that. Yes. So, exactly. Yeah. So, as an owner operator of your own restaurant, do you ever feel misunderstood? Oh, of course. I mean, you know, there's this ongoing thing where there's, you know, his story, her story, that story, the real story. When you are out there on your own, there are so many moving parts that people don't see. There are so many struggles that you go through. Sure. Everybody from the outside can look and be like, oh, this is such an easy path. This is I have been through way too much <laughs> in the last five years, and I appreciate every second of it. It's really made a massive difference in how I look at work and how I do things. But it is just so much. It's so much work, and you have to be prepared to do the work. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what moxie is. It's courage. You got to have your that, moxie. That's why I wanted you to have, have you have on. I love it. So let me ask you this question. It can be up to five people. It can be one. It can okay. be living or deceased, okay. famous or not. If you could make a dish with one person. Dolly Parton. <laughs> really? So I have a hashtag. Okay. And I've had my hashtag for quite some time. It was Dolly Parton Eats for Free. Okay. About two years ago, she found out about it. And I was supposed to meet her last year, I think or like be in some sort of call or something, but then Corona happens. Oh, and not the beer. Dolly, I love you. <laughs> yes. I want to be friends. But um, I went down to Dollywood recently and I got to eat for free. So that was like my joke. Yeah. <laughs> like Dolly Parton eats for free at Tuk Tuk. I eat for free at Dollywood. Let's go. But uh, yeah, I would, for somebody who has kind of been thrust into a position of being mm -hmm. a leader, she's taken it very well. And she's yeah. also, like I spent a lot of time in East Tennessee growing up. And so, to see what she's done there, how much employment that she's empowered. Oh, yes. I'm very big on empowering employment. Yes. So. 
I love that. So let me ask you this next question, Sam. What do you consider to be your biggest accomplishment in your career? It could be personal as well, and it could be more than one. Wow, you're asking the hard questions. Well, you know, it is a festival. We've been you out don't here have to get sweating in the yeah, festival, the getting dehydrated, and he's asking me like the hard questions, y'all. I love it. Um, the best thing? Yes. What am I most proud of? Honestly, I'm the most proud of getting a super simple condiment that is critical to Sri Lankan cuisine. Okay. Tamarind onions. I got them on a cover of a national magazine. Nice. And from there, there is like this big inspirational push in the United States to learn more about Sri Lankan cuisine. So the more that I can share flavors and kind of expand that mission, I'm very into. I love that. So this is our signature question. All right, let's go. I don't let anyone get out of it. Uh -oh. You're our 367th guest in the Moxie Talk Library. God forbid, Sam, you walk out of the festival today. It's really hot out. <laughs> it's your last day on earth. I'm already sweating, y'all. <laughs> and he's asking me, and he's asking me these things. I'm sweating. How do you want to be remembered by friends, family, colleagues, patrons of your restaurant, Tuk Tuk? How do you want to be remembered? Ooh. That's a really good question. I think I want to be remembered as somebody who set out to do something, got it done, and left things better than when I found them. That is what I want to do. I want to leave things better than I found them. I like that. So I want people to remember that I might have started off with something small, something broken, something crazy, but I left it better than I found it. I tried to give as many people the opportunities that I get. I don't really believe that there's a purpose in this for me unless everyone else can enjoy it too. Sure. And so I, I love to share these beautiful moments, these festivals, you know, I get to bring, I get to bring my sous chefs here and we yep. have a blast and it's just, it's such a fun experience. You know, we have such a non-traditional path. Every moment becomes an adventure. Yep. So I think that's a great note to end on Sam. Yeah. I'll give you a little elbow bump. Corona safe handshake. <laughs> Thanks for being on Moxie Talk <laughs> with Kurt Thank Jacobs. Thank you for having and me. And we are live at the Railbird Festival in Lexington, Kentucky at the Keeneland internationally renowned race course. Stay tuned for more. You won't regret Cheers, it. Cheers, y'all. Bye. Hey, ladies and gents, I'm here with four beautiful ladies. What's your name on the end? Jenny. Yep. Chloe. Kurt. Sky. <laughs> Sky. Maddie. So what brings you four ladies to uh, Railbird? You first. Uh, we wanted to see Zach Bryan. I good, did. Good answer. Oh, uh, Leon Bridges, baby. Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> uh, these are my friends from all over the country, and we wanted to get uh, together. Very cool, very cool. Rosa Maroney. <laughs> good choices, good choices. This is your first Railbird? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Won't be your last, I bet. No. no. Well, know. you ladies have a beautiful Railbird, and uh, stay tuned for more. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Railbird Festival on the grounds of the historic Keeneland Race Course in Bluegrass Country, Lexington, Kentucky. And I'm here with the one, the only, Grayson Jenkins. How are you doing, buddy? Doing well, man. Appreciate you having me on yeah, today. Yeah, you just had a nice set on. It's Thank good you, stuff. sir. Good Thanks and toasty. For us backstage. Yeah, very toasty, actually. Get hot. So, what is it about Railbird that you like so much? Man, for me, being pretty local you know having so many friends on the bill myself yeah. on the bill and then also getting to Leon Bridges Jason Isbell artists I strive to be like you know awesome, all on man. the same bill so you gave up a full-time job in my research of you to pursue this career about four or five years ago what drives you to excel in this area of expertise as I call it I don't know my dad I think like a lot of people he was a big influence on hard work and so mm -hmm. I've always applied that to whatever I was doing sports work whatever and so sure. I just do that with music now just head down Busting mm -hmm. ass as hard as I can to make it happen. So if somebody was watching this that you and I may never talk to, never meet, what advice could you offer them to jump into this line of work? Because there's in. a lot about it that is always not glamorous, for lack of a better way to put it. I know. It. I was just telling the band, I was like, it's so much work to just get on stage. Mm -hmm. And so I would think, uh, set your intentions and do what you need to do to make yeah. those happen. You know, I mean, That's you got to figure out what you want to, to do, sure. this, do the work. Sure. What's the best piece of advice ever given to you? It could be more than one, personal or professional. Um, I think one thing I've learned and other people have recommended too is to hire good people, people you can count on because I've had other people, you know, like every, like every line of work, you have people you can't count on and that just makes life a lot harder. So it does. find a crew, be good to them and they'll be good to you. I know all about having a good crew. Yeah. Got them here today. Shout Thanks, out. Thanks guys. I appreciate it. So if, this is kind of like a dream question. If you could be on stage with any five musicians, you don't have to name five, living or deceased, famous or not, who would it be oh. and maybe why? 
can be two or three if it doesn't come to mind. <laughs> well, I don't know if I have I can reel off the, my full band lineup, but artists would be John Prine, oh, Sturgill yeah. Simpson, uh, Keith Whitley, Chris Christofferson, and uh, we've got to get a, a female in there. Let's do uh, Stevie Nicks. There you that'd go. Be, that'd, that'd be a good, good lineup. lineup. Yeah. Nothing else, just a limo ride would be pretty fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love Some that. good stories. I love that. So let me ask you this question. Is there a particular song that's your favorite? It might be one of your own. It could be, you know, an artist that's well known or not. And if there is a favorite song, whether it's famous or not, what is it and why? Uh, for me, Help Me Make It Through the Night uh, by Chris Christopherson. I, his yeah. storytelling, he wasn't the greatest singer, but yeah. just the honesty in his storytelling. And I think that's kind of the peak of it uh, yeah. for me. And I love a good love oh, I'm getting chills just thinking about that song. I can hear his voice in the back of my head. Man, and so many people have covered it too, but uh, it's just a killer, killer song. So I love this question. It gives a lot of insight into a person's character. We ask all of our guests this, but do you ever feel misunderstood? Yeah, uh, sometimes, you know, if, if you're playing the wrong room or the wrong stage, then mm -hmm. you're just in front of the wrong people. You know, yeah. you gotta, it takes a while. That's another piece of advice is find your people. You can try to force a, a round peg in a square hole, but it's not gonna work too well. No, it's not. So this show is called Moxie Talking. For those that may not know, Moxie is defined as basically having courage or grit. Where do you get your moxie from, man, to walk away from a full-time job, career, and do this? It's pretty impressive. Man, I, I grew up on a farm, and so I worked really hard as a kid and up until, you know, up till now. And then also I lost my mom in 2015. And, oh, I'm and sorry. Well, I, I appreciate that, but for me, it's a it's a, a drive for mm -hmm. me. You know, that was right before I quit my job, and it's like, what else are you going to do in this life but enjoy right. do something you enjoy? Exactly. So that's it for that. me. I love that. So we ask this question of all our guests, you know, we do more of a polished type studio with sitting down and stuff, but you know, you're our 368th guest nice. in the library. Just over the year mark or <laughs> yeah, day mark. Yeah, exactly. We do, uh, we've been doing it for about 15 years. So we ask this question, you know, God forbid grace and you walk out of here and for whatever reason, it's your last day on earth. How do you want to be remembered by friends, family, colleagues? I'd like to be remembered as loyal and, um, Compassionate. I think those are okay. two things. I try to take care of my friends because my friends take care of me and family as well. But I like to be remembered as somebody that, you know, if you're really in a pinch, I'm the, sure. I, I want to be the guy you call. I appreciate so, it. That's me. That's awesome. That's a great answer. Cool. The sky's the limit for you, man. Thank you, man. You're I appreciate it. the first it. couple chapters, in my opinion. We'll do an elbow <laughs> hey, bump. Fist I appreciate bump. We'll do you. that too. Yeah. Thanks Thank so you all for Chris. having me. I appreciate your time. And we'll be back with more at the Railbird Festival here at the Keeneland Race Course in Lexington, Kentucky, Bluegrass Country. Stay tuned. Hey, ladies and gents, don't you love that music in the background? We're here on the historic, internationally renowned Keeneland Race Course at the Railbird Festival. And here we are with our 369th guest, Liz Cooper. 369. Yes, 15 years we've Holy. been at it. Holy. Wow. Yeah, exactly. So what do you like best about Railbird so far? I mean, I've literally just arrived. Uh -huh. So the grass is very green. Yes. So that's nice. It is nice. So in my research of you, you have a golfing background. I do. Can you enlighten the audience a little bit on that and how you kind of stepped away or basically stepped away yeah. from it? Um, I mean, I started playing when I was probably six or seven. It was mm -hmm. just like a very natural thing. And I just fell into doing it until basically my freshman year of college. And then I realized that it didn't really have any meaning to me and I wanted to do something that was a little more fulfilling sure. uh, which was music and so I bailed and uh, as gracefully as I possibly could which yeah. you know sometimes I'm a bull in a china shop uh, <laughs> and now I play music well that's why I love to have people on with moxie that's why it's called moxie talk because it's about grit and courage now was there anyone in your family that had a big golfing background so was this a big yeah. deal within the family uh, unit? I mean it was definitely a shock but my grandparents all played and my dad plays mm -hmm. golf and it was just something I mean I, I it was essentially it turned into like a job for me and mm -hmm. uh, too much pressure for myself like and on myself from myself so gotcha. I, it was like, Lots you know, I had to like hold back and, sure. uh, but yeah. So what drives you to excel in really a whole different, I would say golf is an art form in a way though it's sports, you know, into right. music, music. Um, passion, mm -hmm. creativity, uh, Microsoft Excel, Photoshop, <laughs> exactly. drugs. Hey, hey, I wanted to say it's a family channel, but it's not. Perfect. <laughs> we covered everything on this show. Great. I appreciate that. So what 
advice would you offer someone watching this that you and I probably will never meet? Right. You know, younger or older, regardless of gender, ethnicity, socioeconomic right. background. What advice would you offer them if they wanted to pursue a mu musical career? Um, to be as sure as possible that that's something that they want to do. And, and I mean, no one, if you want to do this, you, you do what you're going to do and you never take anyone's advice. Right. You just you work as hard as you can. And if you believe in yourself and, uh, you, if you really work hard, then, mm -hmm. um, I feel like you can, you can do a lot with those two things and be as nice as possible. So when was that aha moment? I like to call it Liz when you like, golf's not it it's music all the way 150 percent was there that moment that you could kind of realize that crystallized uh, for you or was it kind of a i think it evolution? was just over the, i think it was an evolution mm -hmm. i mean because i've i've been doing this i mean for a, a long time sure. and uh it's 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 peaks and valleys mm -hmm. uh and yeah i think like the high highs keep me going and the low lows make me question why i do anything at all and then uh, something really amazing will happen again, and then I'll be like, yes, I'm doing this for the rest of my life. So, so there's no telling. So at the time of this particular Moxie talk, you're getting ready to release your second album. Yeah. What's the title of it? Hot Sass. <laughs> I love that. That's right. <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever used that of her um, album title. Great. Well, that's why I, I wrote that song and made that's it. great. I love it. We're looking forward to hearing it, more of it. Uh, my next question is, and this is kind of interesting, if you could pick five musicians anywhere in the world they can be famous or not living or deceased and you could perform with them on stage who might it be if you can't come up with five totally understandable it can be one um ooh, i feel like it would be really interesting to do something with neil young mm, good choice um because he's one of my favorites mm -hmm. and uh i think um, probably Ella Fitzgerald. Ooh, that would be an eclectic group, the three of you so far. Yeah, any, any more? Um, <laughs> that's pretty good choices. Yeah, I, I, I mean, maybe we throw Courtney Love in there to spice it up. And <laughs> there's some hot sass for you. <laughs> uh, and I don't know. I'm sure I have other other people, but uh, Johnny Greenwood. Mm. And then we can write a really weird, yeah. uh, intense, classical, and like far out piece together. I love it. What was the best piece of advice ever given to you? And it can be more than one personal professional. I think you kind of touched upon it earlier, but. Right. Uh, well, I feel like my dad's given me a lot of really good advice since he's my dad. Sure. And uh, has raised me to chase my gut and to just work really hard. And mm -hmm. I mean, really, I, I don't know if there's a best piece of advice, but he's the one that's just like, you don't need to be the smartest person in the world, but if you're the hardest working person in the world and you're the nicest person, then Amen. you can do great things. Exactly. So do you ever feel like you're misunderstood? I mean, every day. <laughs> every day? Well, to myself, <laughs> right. yeah. I'm like, I'm. sometimes I, I misunderstand myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can surprise yourself. I found that out in my own human journey. It's oh, yeah. A, I think it's a human condition, but that's not yeah. <laughs> That's not quite the purpose of the show. It's like we'll get into psychoanalysis human later, condition. as they say. But um, so you also have a part of your group is the Stampede. How did you come up with that name? Was that a, just well, kind of a... I, I mean, I made that when I was like 19 years old yeah. and I just wanted to have a band so yeah. badly. And uh, my friends and I were just like, let's just call it the Stampede. And because it's a force, but we nixed the band's name or I did and everyone was down with it because at this point, no one is that no one that is playing with me was a part of window flowers okay. my, which is my last and uh my debut record and um yeah i mean i just wanted a clean slate especially mm -hmm. after not playing for the last couple sure. of years and i just feel like hot sass is the most personal thing i've done mm -hmm. and most me thing and uh i mean i worked really hard with joe Baziri and ryan usher to make this yeah. a, a performance with a band and mm -hmm. it's great. um 
so yeah, I, I I love having a band, but I took my name back so I could, you know, exactly never change it well, that's again. That's awesome. That's what <laughs> that's creativity is all about: originality, authenticity. Yeah. So this other question I'm curious about: What has been your greatest professional accomplishment? It can be more than one. Maybe it could be personal. Sure. Um. I mean, really, I, I feel really proud of this record. And I mm-hmm. think to be proud of something that I'm putting out, like, I guess I have, I've probably been in this exact moment before where I'm like, I'm so proud of this, but I'm really proud of my songwriting on mm-hmm. this upcoming record. Wow. And uh, I mean, I, I think looking around and seeing the people that I work with, mm-hmm. they're just people that I love and respect. And I, uh, I mean, I think that's probably my like biggest accomplishment is to be able to make music and be creative with people that I really love and look up to. And uh, that kind of blows me away when, yeah, it's people that I, I just, I love and, and respect. Well, you're doing what you love. I'm doing what I love. That's and I right. try not to remind myself that because I just want to keep moving. Sure. You know, don't want to let that pinch myself or what have you. Right. But yes, I appreciate you sharing that. Sure. So this is our signature question. Okay. Our last question that we ask, you know, we tend to do a studio, more formal, kind of polished look, right? but you can't do all that, obviously, no, in a music no, no. festival. So, you know, God forbid, Liz, you walk out of here, it's your last day on earth for whatever reason. Okay. How do you want to be remembered by fans, friends, family, colleagues, band members? I could go on. How do you want to be remembered? I just want to be respected mm-hmm. and be like, wow, she was a very compassionate and giving person. Mm-hmm. And I don't really know. I mean, we could go literally at any minute. So I, that's kind of just what it Amen. is. Yeah. I mean, that's like the next phase, which is cool. And yeah. it's not something to be like afraid of, I don't think. No, no, not at all. Not yeah. at all. I love asking the question because I think it gives a lot of insight right. into how you're kind of hardwired or how sure. all of us are hardwired. Everyone answers that so differently. Well, I really want to thank you for being on Moxie yeah. Talk with Kurt Jacobs. It's quite an honor and thank you your valuable yes, time. And you're welcome. humbled that you came on with us and looking forward to your great performance and your thank album you. coming out. And um, thanks so much for being with us. We'll do a little elbow bump. Word. All right. I thanks so much. Bump. I appreciate it. Thank yeah, you, Liz. Yeah, nice to meet you. And we'll be back with more here at the Railbird Festival here in Lexington, Kentucky at the Keeneland Race Course in Bluegrass Country. Stay tuned. Hey, ladies and gents, welcome to Railbird here at the famous Keeneland Race Course in Bluegrass Country. If you want chefs, we got them. If you want master distillers, we got them. If you want great musical artists from all kinds of genres, we got them. Stay tuned. Hey, ladies and gents, Kurt Jacobs here on location at the Railbird Festival at the historic, internationally renowned Keeneland Race Course in Lexington, Kentucky, home of the bluegrass. And I'm here with the one, the only, Cedric Burnside. <laughs> Welcome, my friend. Hey, thanks a lot, man. Thanks, thanks for, for being with me. us. What a performance, man. That was great. Wow. That thank was something you. else. So, what drives you to excel in your area of expertise? Oh, wow, man. Um, just, you know, the energy from. From the crowd, you know, when they enjoy my music, mm-hmm. it just drives me to to keep creating, you know, mm-hmm. and and um, you know, the love, the passion I have for music sure. drives me as well, you know. What is it you like about Railbird? Oh wow, man, it, it's a beautiful festival, yeah. really big festival. Yeah. Uh, the crowds is excellent, man. The energy from the crowd today was so awesome, man. Yeah. It made me feel good. That's good. Um, and I, and I have to add this. With everything that's been going on, you know, with sure. COVID and all of that, sure. I'm just damn happy to be working, you know? <laughs> Amen. Who do you credit most influential in your life? I have an idea, but I don't want to share that with the audience. I'll let you yeah. answer. Well, uh, I would have to say, man, uh, my my big daddy, yeah. you know, Aya Burnside. Uh, mm-hmm. Amen. Uh, and for, for those who don't know who big daddy is, that's, yeah. that's my grandfather. <laughs> Um, he, he was something, man. But Woo! he definitely, man, influenced me yeah. uh, the most out of out of anybody. You know? Yeah, I appreciate that. So, Cedric, what is the um, advice you'd give to somebody thinking about entering this career path? You know, you're considered a hill country blues artist, but, you know, regardless of gender, ethnicity, socioeconomic background, you know, male, female, the whole nine yards, what advice would you offer them? Well, uh, I, I, I would definitely say, man, um, you know, man, woman, boy, girl, um, I, I would say don't quit. Okay. You know, um, it, it takes determination. And um, as long as you got that strong determination, 
you know, um, quitting is, is not an option. Yeah. You know, um, you, you wouldn't want to quit if you got that determination. Mm -hmm. um, if you really want something, you know, really bad, you got to push yourself to, sure. to get it, you know. And so that's that's the advice I would tell them. It's not to quit, you know. When did you discover that this was going to be your pathway? You know, your your oh, aha wow. moment, as I call it. <laughs> wow. Well, to be honest, man, um, you know, my my big daddy and 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 my dad and uncles um, growing up as a kid, six, seven years old, mm -hmm. um, they used to play house parties, you know, on the on the nice. front porch and, and even in the house when it rained. Uh -huh. And I I will be one of, you know, several grandkids sitting there in amazement you know sure. um watching it and and that music it always t just touched me got you, you know, always down, right yeah, yeah. yeah and and so i knew at a young age i want to play this music this is what i want to do mm -hmm. for the rest of my life i knew that yeah when i was about six seven years old you know and so when did you get into it did you just start was it an evolution or was it like i made a decision and i went for it Oh, I, I definitely made a decision, man. Okay. Uh, I I knew I wanted this. That's great. And um, what nothing else in my mind, what nothing else in my rim, I straight to that. You know, um, I, I started off playing drums. Okay. Um, and so um, uh, I jumped on the drums for the first time. I was about seven years old. You know, and and um, you know, it didn't matter if I could play good or not. You know, yeah. breaking the ice was just jumping up there. You know. Yeah. Uh, I jumped up there and, and people started saying, look at that little young kid, man. He gonna be good someday, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, when when I turned about 10 years old, I was good enough to play in the juke joints. That's great. You know? So they was hiding me behind the beer coolers. Yeah. When the police come in, you know, me and my uncle Gary Burnside, yeah. <laughs> because we was the band, you know? Exactly. Um, and I did my first tour at age 13. Really? First professional tour with my big dad at age 13. Wow. Yeah. I love that. Been doing it ever since, man. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So let me ask you this. If you were to take the musical stage with five musicians, it can be less. It's kind of tough to get five. Yeah. They can be famous, not famous, living or deceased. Who would it be and maybe why? Well, um, I will have to say, man, um, one of them would be my big daddy. Sure. Of course, R.L. Burnside. R.L., that's my man. I love him. And, and the other one would be my dad. Yeah. Um, and, and the reason I picked those two um, is because that's where that's where I come from. You know, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's my bloodline. And I, I would have loved to be able to play the guitar one time with my yeah. big daddy. Never got that chance. Nah, I'm sorry, man. And I would have loved to be able to play a song with my dad playing drums mm -hmm. you know that that would have been so freaking cool yeah i watched my dad along with uh kenny kimbrough and uh Artemis lasure growing up as a kid those was the guys my mentors you yeah. know so i i really would love to have took the stage with them um i i love lightning hopkins you know my big daddy played him for me a lot uh, i love his style i love his voice um, and one of my main guys, man, I wish I could have met and played with, um, Mississippi Fred McDowell. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, uh, that's one. That's one of my guys. Boom! Man. I love it. Love yeah. that dude. Uh huh. <laughs> so, what's the best piece of advice ever given to you, Cedric? And it can be more than one, personal or professional. Well, um, you know, just I, I grew up with my big daddy. Mm -hmm. You know, from a kid to I was old enough to move out on my own, and um. One of the things he used to always tell me is, you know, treat people like you want to be treated. Absolutely. You know, um, and so that stuck with me. It always went with me. And I'm not going to say I always treated people like I want sure, to be sure. treated, you know, but um, I'm learning, you know, and, uh, and more and more every day. And I try to implement it more and more in my life, you know, mm -hmm. as I go through my journey, you know. Do you ever feel like you're misunderstood? Oh, <laughs> yeah, all the time. I love it. <laughs> you're a not lot. human if you're not misunderstood. A lot, man. Yeah. You'd, be, you'd be surprised. Or, may, or maybe not. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, it's a human condition. That's why I love asking that question. So how many albums have you written and how many songs have you written roughly? It doesn't have oh, to be wow. exact. Uh, I think total uh, about nine, wow. you know, eight, nine. 
Um, and each song, each album had about 12 songs on it, okay. 12 to 13. Jeez. Close to 100 yeah, songs, roughly maybe. Yeah, 100. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. if you could pick one song on planet Earth, and that can be a famous song or a song nobody knows. It can be written by an artist nobody knows or is famous, living or deceased. What song would it be and maybe why? Oh, wow. Um, I would have to say Bird Without a Feather. Uh, okay. Um, that's a song that my big daddy used to play all the time. Mm -hmm. um, it's many songs he used to play that I love. Mm -hmm. But that particular song, man, um, it is so unorthodox. Yeah. You know, um, it's so unorthodox. It, it, it's, it's just streams Mississippi, mm -hmm. you know, and, and my big daddy was, you know, he was um, known for Hill Country Blues, being a Hill Country legend. And and then just the, the rhythm, mm -hmm. you know, which was an unorthodox rhythm of his, his style. It's just who he was. And so I think that song right there represents Hill Country Blues. Yeah. You know, the, and, and the unorthodox rhythm that it has, you know, now that's why. Now, our show's called Moxie Talk for a reason. And Moxie, for those that might not know, it's courage, it's grit. Got that grit, baby. Exact, baby. I love it. <laughs> Where do you find your moxie? What, what what drives you in that moxie moment? You know, when nobody's oh, wow, looking, man. as I say, you know, when it's, you got to get up and you got to go play a festival. And we're all human. You love what you do, but you don't feel like it. Well, you know, man, I, I have to say, um, you know, besides me having my passion and my love for my music, you know, that that gives me, you know, courage and stuff to to keep on going, um, because with my music, I reach people, you know, they can they can some people can relate to my music, um, but also my family. You know, I, I have three daughters um, and, and they all just about grown now. You know, uh, my youngest is 16. She just turned 16. Um, and, you know, my, my, my wife, they give me that grit and, and that extra push to keep on going, you know, to take care of what I need to take care of. You know? So what do you consider to be your biggest career achievement? And it could be personal as well. It can be more than one. So there's really no wrong answer. Well, um, you know, um, recently, I, and I have to say this before I, I say anything about this, I have to say, I, I did not know what this award was. Mm -hmm. I never heard of it before. Um, but have you ever heard of the National Endowment Award? Oh, wow. Okay. Yes. So yes. Um, I, I was fortunate enough to um, win that award this year, you know, 2021. That's great. Uh, and uh, the youngest to ever, ever win it, you know. So Really? Um, and it's also the highest honor in the nation that you can get. And um, it's, it's such an honor, man. I, I, I don't have words for it. I, I don't really know you know, how to explain the joy, you know, um, but I, I am so grateful, you know. Wow, that's Very amazing. Very grateful. I did not know that, that is amazing. Yeah. That's <laughs> cool, man. So we asked this question, you know, you're, you're our 370th guest, 15 oh, wow. years, <laughs> you're number 370. You know, God forbid, Cedric, you walk out of the Railbird Festival today for whatever reason, it's your last day on earth, you know, how do you want to be remembered by family, friends, fans, colleagues, band members, I could go on. How do you want to be remembered? Well, uh, I will have to say, man, I, I, I want to be remembered for the love that I put out in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I, I know most people will say music and all of that. I, sure. I feel like my music will, will always be here. Yeah. Um, you know, because I don't, I don't record it several albums. So all you have to do is pick it up and listen to it. Exactly. So I, I want to be remembered for the love that I put out in the world, yeah. you know, and, and not just love for, you know, immediate family or, or good friends, but unconditional love for people I don't even know, you know, yeah. just people in the street, you know. Well, I appreciate that. Cedric, I want to thank you for your rawness, your oh, authenticity, wow, man. <laughs> and I'm humbled and honored thank you, you so much for having time me. to be on Moxie Talk with Kurt Jacobs. Hey, thanks for having me, man. <laughs> and we'll be back with more here at the Railbird Music Festival All right. here at the Keeneland <laughs> Racecourse in Lexington, Kentucky, Bluegrass State. Talk Good at times. You. <laughs> All right, ladies. What's your name? Kirsten. Kirsten. What's your Steph. name? Steph. Steph. What brings you to Railbird? Uh, you, of course. Oh, yes, me, of course. <laughs> I'm sure there's a favorite band. You got one in mind or just hanging out? Well, yes, we saw a Japanese practice yesterday. Oh, yes, they were very good. Unbelievable. Yes. yes. We saw My Morning Jacket. Oh, yes. yes. 
Dave Matthews is tonight. We're excited. First, we're Dave Virgin. So. Is this your first uh, Railbird? First Railbird. Yes, yes. Nice. Yep. Very cool. Well, yeah. you ladies enjoy. Thank Have fun. You. We'll Thank see you man. inside. Yes, we will. All right. Thank you so much. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we're coming to you from the historic, internationally renowned Keeneland Race Course in Lexington, Kentucky. And this is Moxie Talk with Kurt Jacobs. And I'm here with the one, the only, Brent Elliott, the master distiller of what else? Four Roses Bourbon. Welcome. Thanks, Kurt. Glad to be here. I can't think of a better thing to sweat to than Four Roses. <laughs> a lot of sweat happened today, but it's worth it. Music's fantastic. Company's great. So is this your first music festival for Four Roses or for yourself? Uh, no, I've been to many, many. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> Who are you looking forward to? Do you have anyone in mind uh, in particular? A lot of these acts. You know, the older I get, the more some of the acts that show up I'm unfamiliar with. But yeah. there's still some, especially the headliners. Like, cool. I, yeah, I'm looking forward to just about That's you know, great. all the acts here. What do you think's the best thing about Railbird? Anything in mind? Come, uh, come I to just love getting out, seeing everybody, uh, yeah. seeing other people in the industry, yeah. you know, familiar faces. It's just great to be out. I bring the family out, so everyone has a great time. What, what drives you to excel in your area of expertise? You know, I don't know that often people know, yes, we have a plane flying overhead. <laughs> what a master distiller and how involved it can be. I would argue it's not always glamorous. <laughs> so what drives uh, yeah, I mean, you to excel? A real, it is a real job, yep. but I'll tell you, when you find something you love that much yep. and something that brings that much joy to other people, and mm -hmm. people appreciate bourbon, especially now more than ever. Mm -hmm. So to be part of that, that's just fantastic. What would you say to someone out here that might see this interview, this Moxie talk, you know, regardless of ethnicity, background, socioeconomic, what, and they aspire to be a master distiller, what advice could you give them? I would say, you know, Go for it. I mean, the thing is, you've got to love it. You have to work hard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've got to take, you know, small bites, you know, like or good you know, decide, you know, the background you're looking for. Like my background is chemistry because ultimately chemistry has something to do with about every step of the process. You have biology, you have engineering. There are a lot of ways to get into it yeah. that are pertinent to distilling. But if you have a passion for it and love it and you're interested and, and you're persistent, you can get in there. You can get into the industry and I would highly recommend it. It's a great industry, great people. Like I said, everyone that I talk to, uh -huh. you know, whether it's people here, whether it's people at the distillery or when I'm out doing talks and seminars, sure. everyone's just so excited about it. It's, it's such a great product. What, great what is your favorite part of the process of master distilling? You said all those components. Is there one that kind of is like the dessert for you, so to speak? You know, every little piece is important, mm -hmm. but I think the final, when you actually see the final product, what comes out of the barrel, mm -hmm. you know, it kind of all culminates into that point. So I think that's my favorite piece of the process. So Brent, you had mentioned about people that aspire to get into this field of master distilling. What's the best piece of advice that's ever been given to you? It can be personal or professional. It can be more than one. Yeah, to think, I, I don't recall any particular, just one piece of advice, but I've had the, uh, the luxury of being able to work with a lot of the legends sure. in the industry. You know, I've worked alongside Al Young, Jim Rutledge, I've gotten to know Jimmy That's Russell, great. and a lot of the guys in the industry. And just seeing how they, you know, how they embrace the industry, how they're ambassadors for the industry as a whole. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind of been, it sort of set the stage for how right. I believe we present ourselves. And so it's it's not really one piece of advice. It's sure. just the way they hold themselves and getting to know them. And so that's really just it. Just get that's around great. the industry and. It's contagious. Do you feel like master distillers are ever misunderstood? <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah, I think you've answered it. You may not have to say a word. <laughs> um, yeah, I guess we're kind of artists on some level because it sure. all comes down to that, but not the kind of artist that gets misunderstood. Right. So for those that may not be familiar with Four Roses, how was it named? Uh, what exactly, is the history? It's a great question. The history of Four Roses our founder, Paul Jones Jr., he was smitten by a lovely Southern Belle. Okay. And he proposed marriage to her. Nice. And she said, if my answer is yes, I will come to the upcoming Grand Ball wearing a corsage of four <laughs> red roses. Yeah. And you'll never believe it. She did. And so he named his brand Four Roses in honor of the lovely Southern Belle. So as a master distiller, what's been like your biggest highlight of your career? Is there more than one? Uh that's hard to answer too. It seems like just about every day has a new reward and a new challenge. Um, it really is a dream job. What do you think it is about bourbon that makes it so special and so universally loved, the appeal on any part of the planet? I've wondered that a lot. I put a lot of thought into that. And I think it really is, there's something special about how it brings people together. It's mm -hmm. more than just a drink. Sure. It's a reason for people to get together, something to talk about, something to you know get together for. So. 
that's one piece of it. But sure. it, it runs very deep. The tradition, the heritage, and then you know the root of it all is just a it's just a good thing to drink. It just tastes great. It, it <laughs> does taste good. It does taste great. <laughs> So our show is called Moxie Talk for a reason. You know, Moxie, for those that may not be familiar, is defined as basically courage. What Moxie have you exhibited in your career or personally to get to where you are? Probably just taking the position. I was, when I actually found about this role at Four Roses, I was in another state. I just got married. Okay. Oh, just wow. bought a house. <laughs> so it wasn't an easy decision to make. I basically dropped everything. Yeah. And moved back to Kentucky. Yeah. Just for this, and it wasn't even a master uh, distiller role. It was mm -hmm. basically just starting out in the laboratory with a brand that I really didn't know about because Four Roses sure. at that time had just come back to the U.S. Yeah. I didn't even know exactly. the brand. So I guess that was sort of a leap of faith that, you know, looking back, it could have gone either way. I really wasn't, I was really on the fence about what to do. And when I made the decision to come to Four Roses, looking back, it was the sure. best decision I've made. One of the best decisions I've made exactly, in my life. Exactly, yes, yes. Your wife might see this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> so where do you see Four Roses headed into the 21st century and beyond? Where do you see it headed? You know, since I've begun, everything we've done is just trying to keep up with demand, trying to get it to more of the people that want to try Four Roses, people that have enjoyed Four Roses for years. And I just see it as becoming more successful at that. We've expanded our distillery, our mm -hmm. warehouses, our bottling facility. So I see more Four Roses all over the country, you know, getting it into more people's hands. Do you see more females getting into being master distillers than previously? It seemed to be a fairly male-dominated yeah, business. No wrong answer. I'm no, just... no, there absolutely are. I mean, there are distilleries popping up everywhere. A lot of people that are attracted to the industry, mm -hmm. and you're seeing a lot more females taking prominent roles in the distilleries, you know, mm -hmm. master distiller roles, production. That's fantastic. It is. And, and as consumers. I think historically people saw bourbon as like a cowboy drink. Yeah. And now it's something people talk about almost like wine. Exactly. They'll sit together and make tasting notes, and it's more refined. And I think the image of it being just a masculine, one-dimensional drink has really changed. And so that's opened it up to sure. a lot larger of an audience. Well, I can tell you in a 95-degree day in the summer, in August, in a field drinking neat Four Roses, it is a cowboy drink. Even though it's <laughs> called Four Roses, I promise you, it is very good. I've got one final question. We're going to ask you our signature question. Now, this is a more uh, deep question for a okay. music festival type environment, but we ask it of every guest we've ever had. You're actually going to be our 366th guest okay. in the library. When the great day comes, Brent, you know, just hypothetically or metaphorically, you, you make your last barrel of bourbon and you walk out the door and God forbid it's your last day on earth. How do you want to be remembered by colleagues? you know, suppliers, family, friends, the whole enchilada of your life, the whole kit and caboodle? Uh, maybe just as a guy who cared. Okay. About, you know, my family, my friends, mm -hmm. the brand, everything sure. I do. Well, I appreciate that, Brent. Thanks for taking your valuable time to well, be thanks, here. Coach, we'll we'll do great. an elbow bump. We'll All do right, it that way. It. Cheers. Cheers to you, my friend. Well, thanks. Thanks so much. And we'll be back with more here with Moxie Talk with Kurt Jacobs on the Keeneland Racetrack here at Railbird Festival in Lexington, Kentucky. Stay tuned for more. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, we're here at the historic, internationally renowned Keeneland Race Course at the Railbird Music Festival. And I've come upon these three or four musketeers here that have decided to attend Railbird this year. What's your name? Uh, my name's Corey Johnson. And what are these other three fine fellows' names? This is Michael Jones, Chris Mackey, and Mitchell Jones. And where are these guys from? They can talk. <laughs> <laughs> Nashville, Louisville, Owensboro. And I'm also from Owensboro, Kurt. So what brings out – go ahead. Nice, nice. What brings you guys out on a 95-degree summer day to hear music and drink bourbon? Uh, you know, I think getting together, great music. Good food, good tunes. It's a little bit of Kentucky liquid gold, right? There you go. And you uh, go. a beautiful setting here at Keeneland. Absolutely. Do you have a favorite act in mind that you're looking forward to hearing in this weekend or no? Don't oh. say it. Don't say it. I'm looking forward to Billy Strings. Okay. Billy Strings is a good choice. Yeah, right? Billy Strings. I'm a big Jason Isbell fan. So. Nice. Uh, John Moreland. Leon Bridges for me. Right on. So is this your first music festival, guys, or one of many? One of many for me. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, one of many. I had uh, lunch with my son up at UK and That's decided great. on the way home, decided to stop in, see what's going on. I'll be back tomorrow, too. That's awesome. Yeah, one of many, especially in the 90s. <laughs> are you guys back tomorrow, all four of you, or no? Actually, no. Uh, some of us are, but I'm back in Owensboro, Kurt. Some of us have jobs. <laughs> I'll 
I'll be back. You'll be back? Yeah. You coming back? Well, no. Lunch with my son again. And well, in, I got a Chris in, apparently doesn't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> and in case anyone was wondering, these two, second, number two and number four, are related. Yes. Can you see that? Yes. yes. The so camera does not lie. So let me ask you this. What was your first, because music festivals are kind of a fairly new thing. What was your first rock concert? Oh, easy. Give me that. 1985, Brian Adams and the Hooters. Yep. Brian or Ryan? Brian. <laughs> <laughs> What's you, Chris? Uh, does REO Speedwagon count? Yeah. It, no. Rock. <laughs> I hope they don't Come see on. this. I won tickets on a radio station. There you so. go. Yeah. <laughs> Canadian rocker, Brian Adams. Same oh, one. There you go. I see. How what about do you, you got? What do you got? Corey. Wait for it. Drum roll. Uh, first? First ever? ACDC, maybe? Robert Stadium, Evansville, Indiana? Okay. Full confession. My first rock concert was Van Halen, and my grandmother bought me the tickets because she thought it was orchestral. <laughs> that is fantastic. <laughs> Little did I know, I learned about Mary Jane that night, and it wasn't the lady that's in love with Spider Man. But I digress. 1984, so it was David Lee Roth in very hot spandex or whatever they wore back then. Epic, epic. So what's your favorite bourbon? I think I know the answer. Four Roses. Four Roses. Four Roses. Four Roses, like the single barrel. Very nice. There you go. All right, guys, I think that's it. You guys enjoy the Railbird Festival. You have a beautiful time. Enjoy this wonderful hot weather. Drink lots of bourbon, and we'll uh, do a fist bump or elbow bump. There we Thank go. You. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Love Kurt. It. Kurt Jacobs, Moxie Talk here at the Keeneland Race Course in Lexington, Kentucky, and we'll be back with more. Thanks so much. Ladies and gents, that's a wrap from the Railbird Music Festival here at the historic, internationally renowned Keeneland Race Course in Lexington, Kentucky, home of the bluegrass. Stay tuned.